Hello guys and welcome to episode 4 of my KSP career mode tutorial. Since the last episode I have done some of the more simple contracts and got a few more funds, uh, enough to upgrade the tracking station again. And in this episode I'm going to try to get to the moon and hopefully back again. So just like always we're going to start with a command pod and now we're going to make the part of the ship that is going to land back on Earth, which is going to want some science, so we want one of these, and let's get with a couple of these. Yeah, that looks good. And we're going to want a heat shield from aerodynamic, there we go. And then a, probably in the parachute, just to be safe. Make sure nothing breaks. And then a decoupler. Right, so that's that bit done. Now we need the bit that will land on the moon uh, and come back to Kerbin. So this wants to be not a lot of fuel, but very efficient. So let's do it like this. And let's add a few more tanks to the side. Like so with fuel lines connecting these tanks to the middle one. So that means that this engine is going to use the fuel in these tanks for first and then once it's done with that we can decouple these tanks and use the fuel in this one. Uh, let's just put that down there. And we're going to want nose cones on here. And now uh, this part is going to land on the moon and come back, so it needs landing legs. I don't know if these are going to be big enough, so let's deploy them. Uh, ooh, only just, let's go to the offset tool and move them down a little. I'll also add another set just to be safe. And move those down as well so that they're at the same height. Okay, there we go. Now let's retract these again. Okay, now we need the stage which gets us from orbit around Kerbin into a moon orbit. So for that we also want it to be very efficient and not a lot of thrust. So we're going to use this engine again because it's the most efficient engine we have. And let's add another tank to the bottom of that, just to be safe. Okay, that looks fine. And now let's decouple this again and make the stage which gets this into orbit. So we're going to make this a bit bigger with one of those adapters. And then one of these. And let's get with this engine that's quite powerful. So it should have no problem pushing this bit into orbit. And then let's decouple that again. And add a couple of these down here. And that engine. And we want to have a few solid fuel boosters for this first stage. Uh, let's go with three. These big ones. Yeah, that looks good. So we want those to go at the same time as that middle engine, and then we want those to decouple, and then we want this whole stage to decouple. Then we want that next engine to switch on, and then we want this to decouple, then that one. Okay. Yep, that looks good. Let's just check we've got Jeb in there, we do. Let's put some of these onto there. And we're gonna need some winglets. So that this part will fly properly. Okay, let's also add some small ones to this stage because this stage is probably still going to be inside the atmosphere. And let's do that thing that we did last episode as well and move that up and this down so that the decoupler is above the middle of the solid fuel booster so that they go away from the ship instead of hitting into part of it. And we're also going to want to make this a bit 
stronger like that. And like that. Okay, that looks good. Let's give it a go. Okay, throttling up all the way, and off we go. Looks a bit slow, but it's all right. Okay, so we've got our apoapsis out of the atmosphere, so we're just gonna wait till we get up there. And about now, we're gonna switch our engine back on. And point it back towards Prograd. Get it. 71, okay, perfect. I don't want to target the moon. Now I have upgraded the tracking station, so I don't know if this is gonna work now. Ah, oh, it does, excellent. That makes things much easier. Okay, so we want to do this with this, making this number as small as possible. And you also want to make the periaps around the moon as small as possible as well. See, there is now zero, so that means we're going to hit the moon. So we don't want that, but we want it to be very close to that. There, 8,000 meters, that looks good. So let's turn towards that maneuver. Which is going to happen in 21 minutes. And if you've got a ship that's really hard to control like this one, then you can... You can time warp and it will stop all of the spinning, which makes things much easier. Okay, nearly there. And there we go. We moved a little bit away from the maneuver node, that's fine, I'm just pointing back towards it. Okay, that's started to move, so we want to Go over and do this last 4.4 meters per second in this direction. Just get it down a little bit. Okay, that looks good. 20,000. That's almost eight, I guess. It's fine though. We can, uh, we can adjust that as soon as we actually get to the moon encounter. I can't remember if I got much science from above the moon in the last episode or not. So let's give it a go. Uh, let's try doing a... Oh, why are we spinning? Okay, there we go. Let's try doing a crew report. Mm, nope, we've already done that. Okay. So we want to lower that periapsis. Oh yeah, this is for one of the... Um, contracts that we have it is to perform visual surveys over the moon near this this area so that means we have to take a crew report there so what we want to do is we want to change our orbit with a maneuver node here so that it goes over the the top bit there N nearly just making it further away there we go that's what we want isn't it Yeah, let's do that first and then let's and then let's um lower our periapsis. Is that eleven thousand? Okay. Hope this is gonna be close enough. Entering excellent. There we go. Okay, so we've got that. Now we need to point towards retrograde. Which is that direction. Oh dear. Let's stop that. 
Actually, let's wait a little bit longer so that we can get up to our periapsis so we don't want to crash into the moon. Which, at the moment, it looks like we're going to, even though we can see that we're not. Alright, let's start. Start to slow ourselves down. You can see this swinging around and eventually it'll turn into an orbit around the moon. I want to make it kind of circular, that's good enough actually. And now let's do a crew report, see if we've got one of these. An EVA a report even. Let's get back in. Actually let's uh, reset our crew report. Get it stored data, okay good. Orbit moon achieved goal. So now the only one is to plant a flag on the moon. So I guess we're going to have to go down there. Let's give it a go. So we want to slow ourselves down even more. Until we're hitting the moon. So now we'll be hitting the moon around here. I don't really want to land in this massive crater. Um, this area looks kind of flat, I guess. Let's just quick save here because lots of things can go wrong at the moment. I have to make sure that I don't run out of electricity or start doing this, uh, slowing myself down too, too late. I think I've got 400 meters per second to lose. I should probably start about now. And um, just to give myself a little bit more time, I'm going to point slightly upwards of the retrograde marker so that I am. Um, I'm also moving my impact point further away from where I am, which gives me more time to slow down. To do this most efficiently, you want to be. Ideally, you would just burn straight along the horizon until you're about a meter above the ground. It looks like we're going to land in this crater. And then you would you would stop, and at exactly at the point where you're going straight down, you would hit zero meters per second. But obviously we can't do that, so we're just going to have to settle for this little bit of descent, which is more inefficient than it could have been, but it was pretty good. Just going to land on the edge of this crater. So I'm going to use up the fuel in this last stage to slow our descent. Before, where's our shadow? Ah, there it is. Before decoupling it and switching it to the lander. Just going to do that now. And I'm going to press G, which deploys the landing legs. You really landing at anything below about 10 meters per second is normally fine but it's slower the better and we didn't fall over excellent so let's do some goo some goo observing another 40 science and let's observe these materials another 100 science and let's uh, quick save actually in case anything really goes badly wrong and jump out and if I think I can do a EVA report here Yeah, that's that's a see it says above the moon's highlands because I'm actually on the ladder. I'm not on the surface so we can um We can store that Does that do it? It's, yeah, we can Oh, we've actually already got one of them. It's that That's fine though. Let's review it and reset it and now let's press space to jump off. Okay, good. And let's plant the flag. Okay, cool. Mun! Exclamation mark. There we go. So we've done all of our contracts. That's excellent. And let's do an EVA report for 32 science. And if you press R, then it turns on your jetpack, and then you can press Shift to fly back up to the, the rocket. And 
grab onto that and then get back in. Okay, let's also do a crew report. And that's another 20 science. And now we want to think about getting back. Now if you if we uh, time up here, you can see that the moon is spinning this way, which means that we are orbiting Kerbin this way. So to get back to Kerbin, we need to slow ourselves down. So we need to speed up in this direction. And we're actually pretty lucky with our landing site here. Ideally, we would be right on this line because then we could just um, accelerate straight upwards and it would slow down our orbit here and we would end up re-entering the atmosphere at Kerbin, uh, which we are pretty close to it at the moment. So that's pretty good. So we can pretty much go straight up. Let's quick save before we do this. And off we go. Now I want to keep an eye on the fuel in these tanks so that I decouple them at the right time. Okay, there we go. And as you can see, our periapsis is lower than the orbit of the moon because of the direction that we pointed when we took off. So we want to keep going this way and it will keep getting lower. And we want to put that so that it just skims the atmosphere. Let's put it down to about 60. And I'm going to use the rest of the fuel in this stage once I get to the periapsis to slow down. Don't think that re-entry effect should be much of a problem here because we are only just going over the very top part of the atmosphere. Let's check our electricity. We have very little electricity at the moment, so we want to be careful about using too much SAS. Yeah, we're barely even getting into the upper layer of the atmosphere, so let's let's point ourselves back towards the retrograde and switch on our engine, which is going to slow us down and bring down our apparatus. So let's decouple those and we don't need this engine anymore so let's decouple that so now we're just up onto the heat shield and all our science okay we're coming back into the atmosphere let's speed up we shouldn't need to control anything it should automatically point itself to uh, the right direction. And there we go. That is all the re-entry done. Once we get a little bit lower, I'll deploy the parachute. Shoots. Okay, let's do that now. Okay, looks like we're landing on a bit of a hill. Doesn't really matter. As long as we don't fall all the way down and destroy all our science. Nope, looks good. Okay, let's recover. 270 science. Nice. And a hell of a lot more funds for those contracts as well. Wow. Okay, let's have a look in here and see what we can do. That would get us... Better decouplers? Yeah, I'm not too bothered about that. Not too bothered about space plane parts, they don't really get us any science at this stage. Batteries would be good. Not very bothered about that, I don't want small stuff, okay. Solar panels would be very useful, let's do that. Oh yeah, we'd have to upgrade our uh, research and development building to be able to get any higher than this. Uh, what does that give us? True cabin, barometer, and ladders. That would get us a bit more science, I suppose. Uh, let's actually upgrade this. There we go, okay. So now we can have a look at these. Deployable solar panels, heat, uh, thermal controls, deployable radiator, that's what it's called. A larger battery. Very big fuel tank, larger engines. We can't actually afford this at the moment, we're four science off. 
Great. Um, oh, that would be good, actually. SAS. A new pod and some RCS. Yeah, let's get that. Why not? What's that unlock? Okay, good. So, I guess I will see you in the next one.